crafty friends we are going to look at kind of technique more today versus trying to create an entire image um, i'm trying to get back a little bit more to technique stuff versus just coloring an image from start to finish and i know you enjoy that as well but we're gonna see how this works a little bit i think some of this what we're missing or what I am not getting as much of in teaching you is I don't feel like I'm teaching you. So a little back to basics. We're going to learn a few more techniques along the way in the next set of videos. Um, we're going to have those color family videos. I'm going to try to get back to a few of those finding Copic color combinations and then also some technique, technique videos mixed in with we'll still do a few images from start to finish. This is part of the new set from Craft and Kimmy with the um, March 2022 release, um, Peeps and Buns. This is actually a set that I designed for Craft and Kimmy. So I was gonna work on the basket a little bit and I'm gonna keep it really, really simple, but I wanted to show you kind of what I'm thinking. It's supposed to be woven and so and I kept it the design simple I didn't do a real detailed so what I would tend to do is pick two or maybe three colors and you could do completely spring colors you can ignore like a normal kind of wood woven basket you could do pink or blue or but you're gonna get kind of a lighter tone and then you're gonna pick one that's at least a couple steps darker, just like you would for like a wood grain pattern. And in this case, this is an E31 and then I've got an E35. So instead of an E33, which is what I would use for blending, I'm gonna to jump to an E35 and then now again, this is not, doesn't show like kind of an up and down, but what I do know is we're probably coming in and out. So I am going to start showing that we've got some pieces weaving in and out. So I'm just gonna say this is over, that's over, these are coming up from underneath. You can also look at the edges of the basket if you want, but some of that gets a little complicated. It's like, oh my gosh, where do I stop? Do I look at the shape of the cylinder? Do I show the weave of the basket? Where do I, what, which way, you know, complicated on yourself, but I'm going to kind of focus in on the over under portion. And then, Kind of depending on what you want, you can, I'll do a little bit of that edge. And then I'm going to come a little bit because it looks like we have these kind of layers. So I'm going to come along and go right underneath. And that one kind of bumped into that. Oops. But hopefully when I come back we'll see what this does that it is going to show kind of that over under effect and a little bit how those are sitting below. So right in the center of these guys Kind of pushing that out, blending that in. So even on these ones that are top, like sitting up, I am going to go back and hit them a second time with this E31 because remember as we layer those layers of ink, each time they get a little darker. And so I don't want some of that E31 to be quite a bit brighter than the other. We want to go ahead and 
get it all about the same range. That gives me some of that over and under that I'm looking for. And I can go back in and kind of hit right at that edge. A little bit more if I want to, I could come in and hit with a darker, even a darker tone or a blue violet. There we go. So that helps me get kind of that in out woven feel. I'm going to do the same thing on this guy. I am going to give this a little twist though too. So I'm going to come along the bottom edge and then along one kind of along that left and then along the bottom to show that twist a little bit. Yeah, gives it a little more of a shape, right? To show that even more so, let's look at it. What happens if we do no line coloring? So a lot of times with no line, I will start with my darker because that helps me not lose those little interior lines. I'm not outlining. I'm adding where I think those shadows are going to be first. So not the cast shadows. Don't get confused with that. So if Jan, if you're watching, these are not the cast shadows. The cast shadows are what you see on my table that my hand is creating on the paper. That's a cast shadow. The shadow areas are the darkest areas on the three-dimensional object. So along that bottom edge as it curls under, that's the shadow area. And then the cast shadow is those ones it throws. So if I have a little shadow that happens underneath the bow, back on the basket, that's a cast shadow. Don't want to confuse you there, but that is the difference. All right, and then we have our little basket. Let's see, we'll do kind of the same. So we'll say this one's coming out from underneath out from underneath. And then this one would be over. This one's going to come out from underneath. Out. And obviously, please keep turning your image. I'm trying to keep mine upright so you can see it, but you do not need to do that. You keep flipping yours around. And then I kind of went down to the next one and said this one's also Coming out from underneath, out from underneath, skip. This one's over, under. Hope you don't hear that. My stomach's doing funny things. And this little one coming under, over under and creating a new line ignoring my stamp line every once in a while with no line images especially when you're trying to basically color upside down you end up creating new edges no one knows because they don't know they can't see the originals don't worry about it all right, over, under, over, under, a little bit on the edge, a little bit on the edge, and then 
we'll go ahead and add our lighter color. And we'll see what we've got where we need to add some shape so that we don't lose detail because there's an, some of those over ones are going to be pretty flat so we might need to add just a little bit to those right the under ones because of the way they're coming up from underneath and have those edges to them those end up with these nice kind of defined edges but we don't want to neglect the others Isn't it amazing when you use the exact same colors, how different they can look when you're doing the no line coloring. And obviously we layered that E3 one first and then came back with the E. 3, 5, and then E3, 1. So now we've got these like bright light ones kind of glaring at us. So we'll need to do a little bit of work there. But we'll see if this gets us started. Okay. So we've got a pretty good twist going. We've got some over under happening, but I feel like we're losing shape. So I think we're going to have to add a little bit on these. They don't need to be as dark and we can even accentuate these guys, but we probably need to give them like the kind of bow outward, right? So what if on this one, we go ahead and add that in-between tone. We don't go all the way to the 3-5. We go to a 3-3. Three, three. So this is an E33, which if you've ever, if you've worked a lot with the E3s, the shift between the 3.1 to 3.3 to 3.5 is pretty subtle. So it's going to be a pretty gentle, but I think it'll give us just enough. To give a little shape to these other guys. We'll see. We might still have to add a little three, five, because the tone is now a little bit different, isn't it? Yes. So while it's wet, let's add a little bit on those top edges where it's getting that overlap. That might be just enough. And there it is. There we go. Yep. So by adding just that little bit at that top edge with the E35, I think we're going to kind of set that in so it looks a little bit more like a woven basket. In fact, I like this one way better than this one. I do. 
wonder if I need to go back. This is that E33. Uh, yep. I like that better on both. Isn't it amazing? Things I tell you guys when you do these same images with the same colors multiple times. You learn things, and isn't that amazing that it happens to me too? I hope it happens to you guys too, because I think it's one of the best things you can do for yourself. Don't just keep skipping from image to image. Practice the same image multiple times, same colors. Try small differences, like going from um, black ink to a no line, either pink or gray or sepia, and try it. See what you get. It's going to be different. Um, but this is really what I wanted to touch on today, creating that kind of up and over effect of the basket, the in and out, the woven effect. So that's it. Short and sweet today. Thanks you guys so much for joining me. Again, those are from Craft and Kimmy, the March 2022 release. Peeps and buns, or buns and peeps. I hope you enjoyed the little mini tutorial today. Have a happy, colorful day.